Well, about two months later, you're finally getting something that became irrelevant almost instantly. But this is controversy. Irrelevancy doesn't matter here, so we're doing it anyway. Woo! Oh, and uh, here's a big fat disclaimer. This video is going to contain spoilers for all of Hatred, so if you actually want to play it for some reason, I recommend you get out of here while you can. This video also contains an opinion or two, and that opinion may be subjective and perhaps objective, but it is still an opinion and I couldn't care less if you agree with it or not. And with that said... Today's game is Hatred, and it caused... Controversy. Oh, Hatred, what can be said? Well, you'll find out today because I'm mixing things up. This is going to be a review of both Hatred the Game and Hatred the Controversy. The format will still be about the same as if I'm just reviewing the controversy, but I'll also be talking about whether or not the game is actually good. Yes, I can play the pretentious game critic role too, and here are my first words is one. Hatred can go The Queen's twat. To be fair, I had somewhat high hopes for Hatred. When I saw the trailer for the game, I knew that it was gonna be big. Especially the backlash I saw coming so easily, it could have been in the Bentley subglacial trench thousands of meters under the surface of the Earth, and I'd still see it coming. This was confirmed by the wide range of reactions to this trailer, with sites like Polygon, PCMag, GameZone, Eurogamer, and Kotaku absolutely losing their shit over it. And the YouTube comments voiced a fair amount of concern as well. And through all that blabber came one common trait about the game. It being a so-called mass murder simulator. This label didn't really do the game any favors in its chances to win over society, but that doesn't make it special either. We've already had countless other mass murder simulators in the past. Hell, if you take the phrase far enough, any game where you kill multiple enemies could be considered a mass murder simulator. But yeah, we're talking about the more direct mass murder simulators here. And much like these other direct mass murder simulators, the spectacle of the violence wears off rather quickly. After seeing the trailer a few times, I easily got used to it, and compared to other violent games, it was actually kinda tame. Unfortunately, almost every other person saw it differently and were like, Oh my god, he blew that black ass head off with a stock acid shotgun, so get this away from me! Even gamers who would usually go out of their way to defend violence like this wanted no say in this crap. And looking at the trailer once again, it's easy to see why. The game is trying so hard to be taken seriously, with the protagonist going on and on about how he hates the world and everyone in it, and that he wants out. And the only way out in his eyes is with a mass genocide, apparently. Now, whether or not the game succeeds in this, I'll explain later, but moving on from that, a couple of months after the trailer was released and had been sitting in the Steam Greenlight service, someone at Valve decided it was a good idea to remove the game from the site completely. Now, I'm not sure if it was their decision alone or if it was influenced by the community's collective disgust of the game, but either way, yes, there was a backlash to the backlash. This came from the usual people, those who thought Steam was censoring the game and that free speech means free speech no matter what is being said. I believe this group is known as the Corrupt Moral Police. <laughs> now, I do like free speech, but I really wasn't bothered by the removal of the game from Steam. I'm sure they would have found another way, I mean it's not like Gabe fucking Newell was gonna put it back himself- Wow, we are blowing through this, aren't we? Naturally, the man bringing the game back to Steam found a backlash of its own. This backlash to the backlash of the backlash, however, was still not enough to bring the game down, and by the end of 2014 had been greenlit by the Steam community and was on the path to becoming a fully realized product. And then things got interesting. At some point in January, the dudes at Destructive Creations, ha ha, obligatory ironic laugh, ha ha, sent footage of Hatred to the ESRB to get an official rating for the game. And Hatred ended up being the third game in the ESRB's history to be given the AO rating for violence. And that means Steam was now its only usable platform, cause the big three don't want that shit in their house. For the next six months, Destructor Creations had put out some new trailers for the game, but even with those in check and again, an AO rating, the controversy had kinda died down. It was brought up again during the Skaldic Games incident, screw those guys by the way, but it was obvious that the controversy wouldn't be as strong as when it started until the game was released. Maybe. Regardless, I had pre-ordered the game, for which I have reasons that will be explained in due time. 
Eventually, DC announced the game was set to be released on June 1st, and as that day loomed closer and closer, I had a strong feeling that something was going to happen right before it got released. Unfortunately, my prediction was correct. A few days before Hatred would become available, streaming site Twitch.tv decided to amend their safety policy and subsequently banned all adult-only games from being played on the site. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I think Twitch doing this just before a game rated AO was going to be released is a bit too coincidental for my taste. Certainly hampered my plans for streaming the game, but Hitbox was there to save the day. Too bad no one still watched it. So you've probably been thinking, even what the hell is wrong with you? Why you spend $20 on a game you probably know is gonna take so hard it could be the next 47 Ronin? And why you making me say bad jokes? Well, newfound Italian slash Jamaican audience, here's why. Context. I had no interest in the actual game itself, and admittedly it was something I just couldn't take seriously at all. But I still saw potential in it. For all I knew, behind the mask of a so-called genocide simulator, lied a poignant story about a man in a world that's been nothing but vicious to him and has lost the will to live. Maybe by the end, we would learn of such a thing, and it would make us reflect on similar events in real life, and the people who caused them. Maybe, it would be what we didn't think it was. Time to die, pig. Rise and die. Praise destiny fulfilled. Alright, with that bluff out of the way, let's get down to business. At first, hatred did hold my attention. The game's black and white aesthetic is very cool looking, and the controls work rather well. Also, the first couple of times I killed an innocent bystander, I did feel some slight twinge of regret. But the game quickly loosened its weak grip on me, and soon I came to the horrid realization that I was not going to have a good time with it. The game is literally all about killing people. That's it. Sure, you have a nice variety of weapons and executions, and even on easy, your opposition is quite fierce, but that doesn't change the fact that all you do is kill, kill, kill. Shoot these people, now shoot these people, now shoot these people. Now turn the gun on yourself and shame for what you've done. Oh, wait, no, that was me watching Bud Doer's suicide while waiting for the goddamn levels to load. Hatred did something that I didn't even think was possible in video games. It made killing innocent bystanders boring. Not even 10 minutes into playing the first level, I found myself struggling to keep playing. I somehow managed to slog through, but all I found were even more problems. For starters, there's the game's sad attempt at dialogue. The writing is some of the worst I've ever had the pleasure to hear, and the Hatred Guy's constant angsty lines about death and despair is the kind of grating nonsense you find in a deedless comedian's act. And the visuals look cool at first, but they gave me a hell of a mind grain after I stared at them too long. Going back to the actual gameplay, the shooting is terrible. It's as if all the weapons were modified from paper mache versions of the real thing, because they don't have any kind of satisfying impact whatsoever. It takes a good few hits to bring someone down, especially the more well-protected police, and ammo gets wasted quickly. But good luck finding any ammo unless you want to go head-to-head -head with Mr. Cop and his trusty shotgun. Also, in order to regain health, you have to execute someone, and while I like the idea, that's the only way to regain health. No mushrooms lying around in this place. If you want your blood back, you gotta spill someone else's. So because of that, I died. And I died a lot. And if you die in this game, you have to start the level all over again. If you have a respawn point though, you can just respawn where you left off. But in order to get those, you gotta complete the boring, repetitive, inspired, and barely explained missions. So if you use up almost all your ammo while trying to complete these missions with no respawn points left and you get trapped by a bunch of rampant police officers or armed bystanders and the pile of bodies you're surrounded by doesn't contain someone who's still got half their head attached to them, you're shit out of luck. And after that, I quit. I couldn't take it anymore. But you know, I still wanted to see if anything I predicted before the game's release could have been included by the game's ending. And the only way to find out was to see that online. So I went onto YouTube and there it was. The game's last chance to prove to society that it may not be the dark-hearted genocide simulator we all think it is. 
How do I overload the reactors? What? No, never! It will cause a massive explosion! Are you insane? That's what I want, and you will tell me. Or I'll make you die. Very fucking ah! God, I should have known better than to think of such silly things. I will admit that. But I'm still pissed about it. They could have added anything to give the game some form of context. Like, oh, I don't know. The guy saying something like, I lost everything I own. Or, I have cancer. Or, my wife has cancer. Or, your mom stopped seeing me. <laughs> but there is nothing that explains this guy's actions. But even, this is a game that doesn't need the story, it's just about the gameplay. You know what? Fine. If you like badly designed twin stick shooting with a shit difficulty curve and almost nothing to offer, then you'll enjoy the hell out of it. But I have higher standards than that, and I can proudly say this was the biggest waste of money I ever spent on a game. Ever. I think all of this can be summed up by saying, Useless piece of shit. Now as for the controversy, well after the game was crapped onto the Steam storefront and sold boatloads, nothing else happened. Yeah, you'd expect another fire to start after the game actually came out, but there was no fire to behold. And you know, I think that's a good thing. As I said in the Mortal Kombat episode, violence in video games has been more and more acceptable among everyone these days. And while the concept of hatred is certainly controversial in its own right, the actual violence is so tame you could put it in a circus act. Actually, no, wait, that's a bad idea, don't do that. So, yeah, hatred. Useless piece of shit. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Hatred Man, I'm sure your parents are proud. Now for a rating of the game, I'm not gonna hand out a number. Instead, I'll give out a quote. Hatred is a big waste of time, money, and sanity. I don't care what anyone says, it sucks. And as for the controversy, though slightly better, it's only getting six masochistic fantasies achieved out of ten. Like with the no Russian scene, yes, it's a game where you commit genocide. But that's about it. Overall, I hate hatred. And I hate that I hate hatred because I didn't want to hate hatred, but after playing hatred and seeing a bunch of hatred haters hate hatred like no haters have hated before, I have no choice but to hate hatred. Maybe for a sequel they can make a parody out of the whole thing, like for that hug trailer video, but in the meantime, hatred is staying uninstalled forever, and I'm gonna go play some Apollo Justice and Alien Isolation now. Two games that don't waste my time and money. So if you'll excuse me, I'm just uh, gonna go, just gonna go do that right now. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Useless piece of shit.